Chirality is very important in biochemistry and in life. Hi, this is Dr. Cook, your Chem 240 instructor. Let's take a look at the next video. In Chapter 6, we're going to talk about the concept of chirality, or the handedness of molecules. Previously, we had talked about stereoisomers with regards to compounds that have restricted rotation. So in this case, we talked about the fact that ring structures can have isomers, which are either cis or trans. And alkenes, because of the restricted rotation about a carbon-carbon double bond, can also exist as stereoisomers when they're both on the same side, such as cis-2-butene and trans-2-butene when they're on opposite sides. But there's another kind of stereoisomerism which occurs when we have carbons that are different in three dimensions based on the tetrahedral nature of the carbon. So let's review a little bit about isomers in general. The overall term isomer refers to a very general definition of molecules which have the same number and kind of atoms but are somehow different. That can be different in many different ways. We have seen those differences in how they're bonded. That's what we refer to as constitutional isomers, when atoms are bonded to different atoms when you're comparing two molecules. Or in stereoisomers, when they're only different in their three-dimensional arrangements due to some kind of restricted rotation as we saw with cis and trans. But actually there are more kinds of stereoisomers than that. We have two classes of stereoisomers. The cis and trans isomers we've talked about actually fall into a class which we refer to as diastereomers. They are stereoisomers which are not mirror images. There's another kind of diastereomer which we're going to talk about in this chapter, which we refer to as configurational diastereomers. Enantiomers are stereoisomers which are mirror images of each other, and this is where we get this concept of chirality or handedness in nature. So if you think about molecules that are symmetric, for example, difluorochloromethane, you can see here if you take the mirror image of that molecule, that molecule is identical. And that's because the fluorine groups are the same. Note that the carbon is tetrahedral. And if we look at the carbon, write down the carbon bond and draw a plane here, you can see that there's a mirror plane that bisects the molecule. It has a mirror plane of symmetry. So the fluorine is reflected to the fluorine on the other side. That half of the chlorine is reflected to that half, etc. So it is exactly cut down the middle that there was a reflection of identical groups on the left and the right side of that mirror plane. Thus, if you take the mirror image of the molecule, it's also identical. And if you slide this over, this lines up with that. This fluorine will line up with that fluorine. That chlorine lines up there, etc. So everything lines up. Those molecules are what we would refer to as superimposable. In other words, they're identical because you can take one and slide it over and line it up exactly on top of the other one. They would be the same. Well, let's take this generic example. Remember that carbon is tetrahedral when it's sp3 hybridized. And if I look at a carbon atom that has four different groups, which I've indicated here by four different colors, and you take a look at its mirror image, we notice that there are some differences between these molecules. I've shown on the left here one carbon molecule and the mirror image of that on the right. And if you look at this mirror image and rotate it around and then try to slide it over, what you'll see is that the molecules are not identical. They are not superimposable. While this blue lines up with that blue and that red group would line up with that red group, you'll notice what's coming out towards you here is green. That would overlap with the purple if you tried to superimpose them, and that is not the same. Same thing in the back. The purple would line up with the green, and that's not superimposable. So in fact, these are two different isomers. They're stereoisomers because of the arrangements of the groups in space, and they're related as mirror images, so these would be an example of enantiomers. enantiomers. So here are some terms for you. Enantiomers. Molecules that are not superimposable or that are somehow different, they are stereoisomers, yet they are mirror images of each other. Molecules which lack symmetry and whose mirror images are different that could exist as a pair of enantiomers are what we refer to as chiral molecules. If a molecule has a plane of symmetry, that means its mirror image would by default have to be the same 
If there's a mirror plane within the molecule, then the mirror image has to be identical. That's uh, what we refer to as achiral molecules or not chiral. And another term that we should recognize is that when you have a carbon with four different groups attached, that is actually the point of asymmetry within a molecule. And that's what we refer to as a stereogenic carbon. Molecules can exist with zero stereogenic carbons, one stereogenic carbon, or many stereogenic carbons. And this all has impacts on the number of stereoisomers that are possible for those molecules. So to summarize that, molecules that have a mirror plane of symmetry within it are symmetric, their mirror images are identical, and they are achiral. Their mirror images are identical. Molecules that have four different groups attached to a sp3 carbon would have a mirror image which is different, and so these molecules would be inherently chiral. Chirality is very important in biochemistry and in life. These are some of the building blocks of natural living organisms. So for example, carbohydrates, DNA, amino acids that make up proteins. All of these types of molecules are chiral. They have handedness and they have stereogenic carbons within them somewhere. So for example, this glucose molecule, you can see these carbons that I've highlighted here. There are five carbons in glucose that are each have four different groups attached. It's not symmetric. Its mirror image is different. And living systems use one specific mirror image isomer of this in its processes. DNA, although I haven't shown the molecular structure, just the more gross structure for this is the a helix. And a helix is also handed. And that's handed because of the backbone of DNA has chiral molecules on it. The sugars that link the base pairs together are chiral. Amino acids also have stereogenic carbons, and so they are handed as well. In biological and biochemical processes and in proteins, they typically use only one enantiomer of that possible amino acid. We see the impacts of chirality in macroscopic ways. So, for example, you can have mirror image isomers of molecules that interact differently with proteins and enzymes in our body that are also chiral. So when you have chiral molecules interacting with other chiral molecules, there can be differences. So this molecule carvone, here's the carvone structure on the left and its mirror image structure on the right. These both have impacts in our taste and smell receptors. However, they interact differently. So the mirror image isomer on the left tastes and smells like spearmint, and this is the component of spearmint oil, whereas the one on the right tastes and smells like caraway seeds. So we have a very different perception when these molecules and mirror images of these molecules interact with our chiral receptors within our nose and tongue. Same thing with this molecule limonene. This one on the left has an orange flavor, whereas the one on the right can smell or taste like turpentine or lemon. So these chiral molecules interact differently with the chiral receptors in our bodies. This is also true in drug molecules. For example, what I've shown here in blue is the surface of a protein which is chiral and it has binding pockets and a drug molecule that would bind in there to inhibit this particular enzyme. And what you can see is that the drug molecule has some chiral centers that if they were of the opposite configuration, they wouldn't fit. So if you really think about molecules as being handed, you have left and right handed molecules and they would fit into only a left glove or a right glove depending on which mirror image it is. It's the same thing with chiral molecules interacting with enzymes in our body. So this has a big impact on drugs. Drugs have to be prepared and tested as single mirror image isomers separately to know whether they have beneficial properties. There was a famous case in the 1960s of this drug called thalidomide which exists as mirror images because there's one stereogenic carbon present in this molecule. And it turns out this was given to pregnant mothers to ease morning sickness. However, one mirror image isomer had the beneficial sedative effects to help with the morning sickness, whereas the other one caused severe birth defects. This was the, eventually banned and it spurred a new FDA regulation that requires all new drug entities that are developed to be tested as their single enantiomers to make sure these kinds of problems don't exist for new drugs.